The movie begins in a dark alleyway. A man, Eclipso, has just walked out of the theater when someone suddenly restrains him from behind, causing him to lose consciousness. Eclipso then wakes up in a dark surgical room beside a body with wrinkly skin. The sight of this causes him to scream in terror. Not long after, another man, Moreau, wakes up inside his room. He then sees an advertisement for a product advertised by a superhero. Afterward, he watches a video on his phone about voting for one's favorite superhero, but it's interrupted by a call from the police. Moreau immediately tells them that he is on his way. It turns out that in this world, superheroes have been integrated into society in which Moreau serves as a detective that has no superpower. He then arrives at the burnt remains of a nightclub where he is informed by a lady officer that it is a case of arson that was perpetrated by teenagers. After learning this, Moreau immediately dismisses the lady officer and heads to the police station. Upon arriving at the police station, Moreau talks with the boss who informs him that his record as a detective has been going downhill for the past 10 years. As such, he will start working with another police officer. His new partner is no one but the lady officer named Cecil who appeared earlier. After the meeting with the boss, he goes straight to the locker room. There, Cecil walks in to tell him that there has been a hostage situation in a high school. There, a curly-haired boy with the power of flames is terrorizing other students. After briefly hiding from the arsonist, a student named Lily runs toward the bathroom to hide herself and her ability to create electricity through her eyes. Rudy, another student inside the bathroom, notices the electricity from the girl's stall. At this point, Moreau and Cecil have just arrived at the school. While Cecil is briefed about the situation, the detective immediately heads straight into the action without a plan. Downstairs, the curly-haired boy is threatening some students with his power. Cecil then sees her partner go to the student for a talk. After calming the curly-haired boy, Moreau restrains the boy's flaming hands to stop him from using his ability, leading the police officers to successfully arrest the boy. After the situation, Cecil informs her partner that the curly-haired boy is not the arsonist responsible for the nightclub fire, even though the burnt marks made by the boy match the same burnt marks at the nightclub. Aside from this, they have also gathered two orange-colored glow sticks from the boy. While inside the car, Cecil discusses with her partner that it is impossible for two persons to have the same superpower, which in this case is the ability of fire. Moreau then asks to be dropped at the roundabout even though it is illegal to do so, making his partner very angry about this. He then proceeds to buy some grocery items from a small store. Meanwhile, outside the school, a teenager sells some glow sticks that are similar to what the curly-haired boy dropped. It turns out that there are drugs inside the glow sticks that, when inhaled, give the user a superpower. Moreau heads to the house of his old friend, Henry. He sees the old man talking to himself in front of a mirror while wearing a superhero mask. While cooking a dish, he remembers how his friend Henry used to be a superhero who is also a member of a superhero group named Pack Royal. After that, the two friends watch a cooking show, and Morneau asks his friend if one can identify someone by their superpowers alone. Henry then looks at his database to determine the person his friend is trying to identify, which is someone with the ability to throw fire. The old man finds one fire user named Brasero. After receiving this information, Moreau decides to leave. Before he can get out, however, Henry suddenly teleports uncontrollably somewhere in the house, alarming Moreau who immediately advises his friend to take his medications. It turns out that the old man is now afflicted with Parkinson's disease, which affects his superpower. Meanwhile, Rudy walks inside a building searching for a person named Nadja. One of Nadja's henchmen does not appreciate the cocky way with which Rudy delivered his request. Still, he allows him to see Nadja. Inside his room, Nadja is fixing a spinning top. He offers Rudy the chance to throw the spinning top, but he immediately takes it back upon realizing that Rudy is inept with the toy. After Nadja successfully throws the spinning top, Rudy informs him that he has some good and bad news to tell him. Afterward, a news report regarding the recent fire attacks on both the nightclub and the high school is shown. Upon showing video footage from the nightclub fire incident, 
The boss tells the police officers that while the same glow sticks have been found at the scene of the crime, their source is untraceable. Aside from this, the curly-haired boy refuses to tell where he bought the said glow sticks. Moreau then shares information about Bracero. As such, the boss orders them all to search for the fire user. Outside the boss's office, Cecil confronts her partner for failing to cooperate with her, treating her as simply an assistant or driver. But Moreau ignores her to receive an incoming call. In the call, Henry tells his friend that Bracero is last seen in a rehabilitation program under a woman named Callista, a former member of Pack Royal. After learning this, the detective immediately hangs up the call. Meanwhile, a basketball game is conducted under Callista's guidance. Then she sees a young man, Alex, is fixing his things and she finds through her superpower that Alex is beaten up recently due to owing some money. As such, she asks him about the person to whom he owes money. Seeing Alex refuse to answer her question, Callista gives him some money so that he can pay the next time. Moreau then enters the court to meet and talk with Callista. However, she immediately tells him that she has no interest in helping him. At this time, Cecil is searching for him, so Moreau leaves with her. Cecil then tells him that the medical examiner wants to see them, so they head there immediately. Afterward, the two police officers inspect a burnt cadaver. The medical examiner informs them that the toxicological report of the body has shown the same substance that is found in the glow sticks. However, the strange thing is that the substance is actually the blood of this body. He concludes that the man died when all of his blood was drained from his body. As it turns out, the burnt cadaver is actually Bracero. On the other side, Rudy walks into the library and sees Lily sitting alone, prompting him to approach the girl. After learning that Lily is a lonely girl with no friends, Rudy takes this opportunity to offer Lily a number that she can call, assuring her that the number belongs to someone that will not think she is weird. Back at the police station, Moreau notices that Cecil is tired from working on the case. He then asks her to rest because there is no development yet in the case. After his partner leaves, he inspects some of the stills from the nightclub footage, where he notices a person in flames. He then calls Cecil to inform her that they now have a possible lead at hand. Immediately, they head to a hospital where this firebrand is confined. Upon arriving at the delinquent's room, Moreau initially tries to directly ask the young man about the supplier of the glow stick drugs. However, because the young man is uncooperative, Cecil comes up with a different approach. She threatens the delinquent, lying to him that the side effect of the drug is an eventual explosion of the body and that the antidote can only be obtained from the supplier. Hearing this, the young man confesses in fear. He tells them that the supplier is another young man, Ismael, who sells drugs outside of the school. Meanwhile, Naja is frustrated with his men because one box of drugs is missing. He lashes out at them because they fail to make a connection between the missing box of drugs and the sudden disappearance of Ismael, one of their dealers. He then praises Rudy because he is the only one that has noticed this detail. He goes on to say that they are not selling the drugs just for profit, but also for justice. As such, he orders his men to immediately search Ismail's whereabouts. After everyone leaves, Naja then uses one of the glow stick drugs to vent out his frustration. Afterward, the police quickly track Ismail's location. Seeing that he is surrounded, Ismail immediately runs away to the top of the buildings. Cecil runs after him, while Moreau chooses to follow from below. Despite having the advantage in numbers, the police lose track of Ismail. However, the observant Moreau notices that a nearby store clerk is strangely eyeing them. The two police officers slowly and discreetly approach the store. While Moreau talks with the store clerk, his partner heads to the back slowly, surprising the unaware Ismail. Fortunately, before Ismail blasts a ball of fire towards Cecil, Moreau swiftly neutralizes him with a fire extinguisher, leading to the arrest of him. Meanwhile, back in Kalista's basketball court, Alex is offered to sell the glow sticks drugs by some men. Despite the easy profit, Alex smartly refuses to partake in the illegal distribution. Kalista then interrupts the discreet meeting by barging into the room. Back in the police station, Ismail is interrogated by Cecil and some other personnel. Because she refuses to answer any questions, the lady officer leaves the room frustrated. Moreau then tells her that he will try to interrogate the young man. Not long after, Moreau comes back to his office. Cecil asks him if he finds anything, 
and he replies that Ismail still refuses to talk. He then tells her that he is going out to find something to eat because he cannot think straight when he's hungry. While inside a nearby restaurant, he receives a call from Henry who asks whether the superpower drug is true or not. Henry then tells his friend that due to Bracero's death, he has also started to inquire about some missing superheroes, which eventually led him to the recent disappearance of Eclipso. He then informs Moreau that Eclipso's superpower is blinding someone temporarily and that he has been missing for a week. While the old man is telling this information, Moreau notices that people are running outside the store. He immediately heads to the police station where he sees a blinded policeman prompting him to immediately call backup. Moreau then walks towards the now disheveled police station. While inside, he sees his partner heading upstairs toward the enemies. As a result, Cecil herself is blinded by the enemies before leaving. Temporarily blinded, she dangerously stumbles backwards towards the railings. Moreau attempts to save her but ends up falling anyway. However, instead of a grim end for Cecil, it turns out that the detective has a superpower all along. The power to make things float. He immediately goes down to catch his unconscious partner. The fleeing Ismail, who is freed by Nadja's henchman, sees this. The following day, the two police officers bond over a bottle of wine, talking about various things including Callista's superpower and the detective's relationship status. Cecil then asks Moreau about what happened at the police station yesterday, but he replies nothing. Meanwhile, the recently freed Ismail is interrogated by Nadja. After throwing a spinning top above Ismail's head, Nadja then orders his men to kill him. Pleading for his life, Ismail blurts out that he found that Moreau has superpower. Hearing this information, Nadja himself executes the young man by choking him with the spinning top's rope. He then orders Rudy to find Moreau. Meanwhile, Kalista has been searching for Alex and finds him in a room. She asks him about what the two other men from earlier are up to. Faced with the threat of being banned from the rehabilitation program, Alex spills the truth about the drug trade. Not long after, the two same men who offered Alex the illegal work are in front of a drug dealer. The drug dealer gives them some blue-colored glow sticks for them to try. Learning about the drug trade from Alex, Kalista heads to where the two men are located. Upon finding their bikes, Kalista's superpower is triggered there and then enabling her to see what happened to the two men earlier. Sadly, when she gets there, Kalista finds out that they have died due to overdosing on the potent drug. The following day, Moreau gets visited by Lily's crying mother at the police station. He then tells Cecil that Lily is missing. Immediately, Moreau goes to Lily's residence. However, he is quickly followed from behind by another car. What is worse is that Lily is now actually getting her blood extracted by nausea for her superpower. Upon arriving at the residence, the detective encounters Kalista, who tells him that she has already searched the place and found nothing. He then continues his search for clues around the apartment. Eventually, he sees a phone number that Rudy gave Lily earlier. Outside, Cecil has just arrived near the apartment. Nearby, Kalista's superpower is triggered, enabling her to see that Cecil will get shot. Because of this, she quickly runs after Cecil to warn her. Meanwhile, Moreau gets restrained by two men who injects him with a tranquilizer. They then quickly deliver his unconscious body to the building's parking lot where a van awaits him. Seeing the kidnapping unfold, Kalista's superpower triggers again, enabling her to see that Moreau will unconsciously use his power. Cecil wants to move immediately, but Kalista tells her to wait without telling her the reason why. As such, the two women wait for the van to bend before making their move. They then attack the van. Cecil shouts at her partner to wake him up while Kalista handles one of the men in a fistfight. Inside the van, Rudy realizes that it is Moreau who causes the van to get stuck. As such, he shoots Moreau several times. The enemies then drive away, leaving Moreau's body slumping to the ground. Cecil opens her partner's flannel, where she witnesses the bullets floating away from his body. The sight of this confuses Cecil because she thought her partner has no superpower. The two women bring Moreau's body back to Henry's place, where he is immediately treated. Cecil then learns that Kalista and Henry have already discovered the detective's power during one of their operations. Their deceased ally, Gigaman, saw Moreau's potential and recruited him, which is why Moreau became their liaison officer. However, 
Moreau stopped using his power when Giga Man died after an explosion occurred during an unrest. Because he hesitated in using his ability back then, he blames himself for what happened. Additionally, Giga Man was actually Lily's father, which explains why Lily's mother knows Moreau. Lily also has the same superpower as her father. After learning her partner's backstory, Cecil then gives Kalista the phone number that Moreau retrieved earlier. By using Henry's technology, they track the number back to Bracero's psychologist. Based on this information, the group devises a plan which involves Henry talking with the psychologist. Once inside the psychologist's office, Henry distracts her by asking for a glass of water. After the psychologist leaves, the old man plants a recording device in her office. After searching, Cecil learns that the psychologist used to work with another doctor whom she had a falling out with due to ethical concerns. Knowing this, Cecil immediately searches for this doctor. Back in Henry's residence, the old man learns from the recordings that the psychologist has a connection with Naja and she reprimands Naja for kidnapping Lily, asking him to stop the killings. Meanwhile, Cecil learns from the doctor that the psychologist once performed a rogue operation to remove a kid's superpower. Although the operation was a success, the boy became insane and hence has killed his parents. Wanting to check Lily's health, the psychologist immediately heads to Naja's location while Kalista secretly follows her. When she gets there, Kalista takes a picture of Naja. While beside Lily, the psychologist advises Naja on how to keep Lily alive. Back at Henry's residence, Cecil talks to the still unconscious Moreau, urging him to wake up so that they can rescue Lily. She later learns that the psychologist has decided to inform the police about Naja and his illegal operations. Cecil believes that this will put many lives in danger instead. At this moment, Moreau slowly moves his hands, indicating that he is regaining consciousness. Due to the urgency of the situation, Cecil's group all head to Naja's lair to make their move. Naja is alarmed by this, immediately alerting his henchmen to prepare against their visitors. He and Rudy then proceed to collect the drugs. Because Lily is still needed, Naja moves the poor girl away from the room. On the other hand, his henchmen empower themselves via the glow stick drugs. Not long after, a fight ensues between the two groups. Even though the enemies have the advantage of having superpowers, they are all defeated by the experienced police. Meanwhile, Naja, who is fleeing with Lily, encounters the now-awakened Moreau. A battle then erupts between the new hero and the empowered villain. With his quick thinking, Moreau approaches Naja with a makeshift shield, protecting himself from his vicious attacks. Outside, the police arrest Naja's henchmen. The boss tells Kalista and Henry that they owe him an explanation regarding Moreau's secret power. Back to the fight, Naja is distracted when Lily's eyes spark. This distraction is enough for Moreau to knock him off. He then proceeds to deliver some punches to Naja's face. Cecil comes to rescue Lily. Naja angrily calls out Lily's name and wants to attack them. To avoid causing more harm, Moreau restrains him and flies to the sky. While in the sky, Naja's body explodes from taking too much of the drugs. Luckily, Moreau manages to let go before the explosion occurs. Cecil, Kalista, and Henry approach their friend and teleport away. Not long after, several news reports cover the recent happenings in Naja's lair, with everyone asking the same question, who is the new mysterious hero that saved the day? It turns out that the public has given Moreau the superhero name Titan. Meanwhile, the boss decides to fire him because it is illegal to have a superhero cop. The boss then reassigns Cecil as the new Pack Royal's liaison officer, which makes Cecil really happy. The Pack Royal is now back in business, with Moreau filling the gap that Giga Man left. However, it seems that Moreau is still pondering his new role in life. Cecil arrives at Henry's apartment and gives a mask to the new superhero. The two then share a passionate kiss. The movie ends with Moreau finally embracing the superhero life as Titan. Additionally, the post credit scene shows that Lily is drawing a superhero suit for herself, implying that she also wants to be a superhero. This movie shows that absolute power corrupts once it falls into the wrong hands. It also shows that anyone is capable of helping other people in their own ways, whether they have abilities or not. As such, the popular adage rings true for this movie, with great power comes great responsibility.